Welcome to VT71 chassis restoration number two. So here's the one I just finished up with. And here's the one I got from the same owner that he'd also like restored. Now this is a TS-4H chassis, whereas this is a TS-4J late edition. They made a bunch of reversions, revisions of this, and this is the very last one. This one is somewhere in the middle. But pretty similar. It's the first few. The original, the B, the C, the D, the E that have a lot of changes. By the time you get to the H, and uh, there is no I, and then you go into the J, and that's the last one. So H and J are actually pretty darn similar. So these all the same tube layouts and circuitry is nearly identical. So uh, the more interesting thing about this one is, well. For one, it's in better cosmetic condition. I think somebody clear-coated it at some point. And it kind of ran a little bit. But, uh, see the copper on this looks quite a bit different than this, which is just raw copper that's been slowly corroding a bit. And this has had a modification. Oh, I never noticed that before. Actually, it's scratched on their TV and him. So some speculation this might have been modified for uh, SSTV, slow scan TV reception. I don't know. Uh, but somebody did some work on it, including a uh, full recap underneath and at least this guy's been replaced and well, possibly this guy. Yeah, this one has two, a sprig. I don't know about that guy. And, well, 6243, so I'm guessing Late in 62 at the earliest. The ballast has seen better days. Uh, I do have the outer metal jacket. You can see inside it's coiled up resistance wire and some mica insulating sheets. Might still be good, but I'll be replacing that anyways. And uh, there's some pretty good tubes in this too. They look to be pretty clean and uh, like this is a six. SL7WGT, it's a high quality version of a 6SL7. They had an insulating sheet here, type of high voltage insulating plastic, I imagine. Might have been some neck arcing issues to the grounded box there. And then underneath, I can see it's been recapped. And a uh, curious thing, when I first uh, reviewed this, I noticed that that modification isn't really, well, going to anything. Which made me think that, well, they didn't finish with doing whatever they were going to do. Which is, uh, well, <laughs> odds considering how much work they did here. So these are all replacements. Old replacements, and... I don't know, these might be plastic film inside, they might be paper. I'll have to do some testing to find out, and maybe I can look up the parts. Like that is a 6P5, I believe. Or 6P25. PM 6P25. That's what a lot of these are. PM 6S5. Well, I can look that up. Uh... Now, what I propose to do, because it's been recapped, albeit many years ago, is uh, try powering this up. But I did notice one thing. Get this wire going to nothing. That is going down through here, through a hole into this box. Well, the detector's inside there. This is the RF mixer oscillator. IF and the detector. Put that gone, no sound of video. But hey, even without a detector, I can still see if the thing powers up. And as with the other chassis, I don't want to risk the CRT in a first power up test, so I've got a dummy load in there in place of the CRT filament. And I hooked up a speaker just for the heck of it, although I don't expect to actually hear anything other than maybe some sort of crackle. Ah, so here we go. This is turned on, so I'll be relying on this power switch. I'm going to turn it down just a little, and 
Let's put it on the current mode so we'll see which current this thing draws when I turn it on. Here we go. Well, that was certainly uh, not too exciting. It's drawing no current. So, what could it be? Well, it could obviously be a broken connection somewhere. It could be a bad power switch. One of these tubes could be burned out. 12 AT7 are plucked out of this set, so at least I know that one's good. But any of the rest could be suspect. So the easiest thing to do is to uh, take out the power cord and check for continuity at the AC plug when it's turned on. Luckily, before I wasted any time tracing out the wiring, I remembered something. Remember I said that this was a TS4H revision? Well, all the revisions up until the 4J late used a different ballast. So, <laughs> that ballast is for 4J late or a TS18. This is subtly different. So, there's that guy. And this is the 4J, also uses that. But we get into the late, and it's a little bit. Particular notice pin 5, it's got nothing going to it. Pin 5 over here most certainly does. Pin 5 is where you are to the AC line, and that's what feeds everything else. And this guy is pin 6, it feeds everything else. You'll notice that this has one more resistant element in it. This guy here, this E. Well, the really early revisions uh, used one tube in the string that, uh, well, <laughs> things didn't work out so well. And they had to put uh, a resistor in parallel with one of the tube filaments to get the currents to equalize out. Later revisions didn't need that, so eventually they just used a different ballast altogether. So what does that mean for us? Well, actually, that's pretty good news. All you got to do is, well, you could short uh, pins 5 and 6 together. Or move all these connections from pin 5 over to pin 6. But in this revision, I know that this isn't used for anything. So I think I can just short these two together and then plug the same ballast in. While I'm doing a little work, I figured I'd reattach that detector lead too, and it turns out it goes right here. That is the green wire, which is the output of the detector going right into the video amp. So if one was to feed in an external video signal, that's exactly where you would do it. Which makes me think that's what somebody was tinkering around with, so let's Get that wire reattached right down in there and see what we can get. Okay, let's try this again. Now, rather than modify the set underneath, I just shorted out pin 5 and 6 on my makeshift ballast there. And I'm feeling a little optimistic, so I actually hooked up an external signal source. And uh, here we go. Well, that seems reasonable. Way too bright. Let's see if filaments glowing. So kill some overhead light here. Yeah, I can see them lighting up. Current draw is staying stable. Rising a little bit now as the tubes are warming up. Speakers reacting to the volume control. The 
so it might not be aligned to receive the channel. I selected. I'll try switching this over. Too good to be true. But uh, everything is pretty stable. So uh, I'm going to try hooking up a picture tube. See if we can get a raster at least. Okay, here we go for second power up test with CRT. Oh. Mm, kind of, we do, sort of. Just turned the. Uh, oh, yeah, you can kind of see it there. It's, the oscillator's really trying hard to work. Well, I didn't check any of these tubes, so. All they'll do is swap out all the tubes from the other side into this one. Seems like the oscillators are struggling mighty hard to work. <laughs> Check out the current draw. Okay, all the tubes have been swapped. Sure is faster than testing them all. Well, it's on the other side too, the little 6AL5. Seems to get a burst of juice before the other tubes. Mm, it's just to be doing the same thing. And it sure looks like a some kind of leaky cap, like a slow RC kind of charge, like some slowly charging up, and then slowly charging up. Could be will be one of the electrolytics too, like the B plus main supply cap. It starts charging up, and then internally it's shorting out, and then charging up, and then shorting out. Which could settle down if the cap is capable of reforming, or something might fail catastrophically if I keep it going. Or it'll just keep doing this for a long time. I'll let it run for a little while, see if there's any change. 
I started examining the power supply a little more closely underneath the chassis. And there's some very strange stuff going on here. So this is the cap right off of the AC line for the voltage doubler. This guy right here. And there's a couple diodes and then another cap. So that's your classic voltage doubler. Well, <laughs> not anymore it isn't. Uh, I haven't quite puzzled out exactly what the heck is going on, but it should be the negative side is going to the AC line, positive side to both rectifiers. So, the AC line goes through a small resistor inside the ballast to provide a little surge protection for this cap and then junction of two diodes. Well, the negative does appear to be going to one side of the AC line directly, not through the ballast resistor. And then the positive, well, <laughs> Here's a junction of those two diodes, and that is not going to the positive like it used to. Instead, one of the diodes goes there. The junction's going through this very small resistor, and it's 2.7 ohms, off to something I haven't traced out yet. Uh, and the positive uh, and negative also go to some other stuff. So the negative in particular, one thing that's odd is it goes around and around. And down through here and eventually to one of the leads on the CRT, which has been cut from where it would normally go. So, basically one side of the AC line is now going to one of the CRT elements. Odd. Which, I'll have to trace it up, but I'm wondering, are they using that for some sort of intensity modulation or sweep? Um... So we saw that this had been modified with a ham switch, or didn't look like it was really doing much. I just clipped out a few components. But maybe this wasn't a uh, slow scan TV. Maybe this was some sort of monitor or a spectrum analyzer or something like that. And maybe they were using the 60 hertz AC sine wave off the line to provide like a horizontal axis sweep while the vertical was driven by a received signal something like that like poor man spectrum analyzer maybe I don't know uh, at least the one nice thing is that all the new wiring has been done uh, with a very distinct type of wire so I should be able to trace it out another odd thing is this positive cap lead here is now going I believe to the negative side of this cap, which I don't quite understand at all why that would be, because that is the on the AC line. So, yeah, definitely some monkey business down in here. The rest of it does appear to be all original, though. So I'll try to drop a schematic and then... Uh, I intend to put this back to the factory stock configuration. Alright, I went through and traced out the wiring changes and forget what I said. It actually wasn't that radical an alteration. So, here is the original. Here is what I found. So, let's start on the top side. So, original goes to the 37 ohm on the ballast pin 5 well so does this one what's different is what's on pin 1 the original goes to this capacitor this goes to that 2.7 ohm resistor we saw that was added and then the two diodes for the voltage doubler here capacitor and then the two diodes for the voltage doubler so they replaced this cap that resistor. Well, let's look at the other side. Used to go AC line 
through switch to B minus for the whole set. Well, that's been cut. Now it goes to this point, which is the junction of these two caps, which I thought was, was so odd. And then there was that wire going off to the CRT. Well, it turns out that was a filament lead, which used to go to B minus. And it just goes to the rest of the sets. So, what they did is they removed one side of the AC line from being B minus. Now it goes to the junction of these two caps, and this way this, form, this forms like a virtual ground. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I think this set would eventually would essentially run the same as uh, before, except. It's been um, more decoupled, I guess you could say, for the AC line. Maybe that was a modification that was published somewhere to uh, maybe make it safer or reduce 60 hertz hum or something. Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm not uh, familiar with this type of power supply configuration. At any rate, I put it back to stock temporarily. I'll uh, clean things up a little bit and I'll replace these diodes. They're kind of nifty, being very early Sylvania types, but uh, I'll put more robust newer ones in. And one final thing that was a little odd the wire that was used. I stripped off the insulation. That's some of the brightest wire I've ever seen, which makes me think. This might be silver wire, or silver plated at least, with some type of uh, Teflon insulation on it. Nice stuff. Alright, so, uh, oh, I, I also tested one of these caps, the one that I had clipped out that used to be on that switch. No leakage at all, and the value is, is pretty close, so I'm thinking these may very well be plastic film caps in here. Some I'm not quite sure about, like this discolored guy down in here. And I did clip out one electrolytic just to just to see. And uh, yeah, it's it's pretty leaky, but uh, it does measure about 10 microfarad. And this is overkill. They put a 450 volt replacement in here. The original was much lower voltage, and when I test it, the voltage it's going to be used at, there's no leakage. So uh, at least that one should be okay for now. I did not test any of these, however, but hey, let's give it another try and see what happens. Okay, here we go. Power up test after the modifications were undone. Hmm, something ain't right. Well, that was a very short-lived power-up test because this resistor fried. What well, resistor is that? This guy right here. So, either something's bad in here, like maybe this cap or one of the diodes is shorted, or I didn't get my wiring quite right, so I'm going to double-check things, test those components. Well, I checked everything out and didn't find any problems. No wiring errors. I tested the electrolytics and they formed up and they can uh, handle their rated voltage. Checked the diodes. They seemed to be okay, but I replaced them anyways. Because when you test them uh, on a meter like this, it's not putting the full rated voltage on them. So, well, there's that. And then uh, I was thinking maybe something shorted out, so... When I flipped the chassis over, so I made sure that uh, nothing was touching anything it shouldn't be. So, uh, let's just give it another shot. This time I didn't even bother hooking up to CRT. I just stuck my dummy load in for the filament again, and well, here goes nothing. Nope, damn it, there it goes again. 
<sighs> oh, and I did check for um, resistance between B plus and B minus, and uh, it seemed to be pretty high, so... Uh, something's not right, so, well, simple thing I can start doing, well, aside from measuring voltage, so I'm tired of popping that resistor all the time, is uh, I can disconnect loads from this stuff. So the only thing going to this point is 4.7k resistor. Check that, make sure it's not shorted. Otherwise, only thing that can draw current is, well, stuff going to B++. So if I disconnect that from the rest of the set, then uh, I can see is the problem in the power supply or is it something hooked up to the power supply. I'll have to be careful though if I disconnect everything from it when I turn the set off. The caps are not going to discharge so I'll need to uh, drain them before I start poking around in here or I might get chucked. Hmm, but before I do that, one more test. I haven't had the set on long enough for the tube filaments to start glowing because the resistor burned out and I turned the set off immediately but just got to thinking, if that resistor is blown, uh, there still should be power going to the tubes and they should start lighting up if I got that stuff wired up right. So, I'm going to leave this thing on. I measured that resistor, it's just blown totally open, so it's not going to be doing anything. But let's see if these tube filaments light up. Ah, there's no current draw. So, I remember one thing that had changed was that one CRT lead, which was this guy right here. This had been rerouted. Well, I hooked it back up to this rail. So maybe there's some other change somewhere else in this filament wiring. So I best double check that because I think that is where the short is. Or, well, there's something, something ain't right. <laughs> Something's not right. Oops, found the problem. I made a mistake. So, right after the power switch, I've got this lead here, which should go to B minus on the set, which is the negative lugs on these two caps, but not this one. <laughs> so, this wire should not be going to this lug, it should be going over to this lug. All right, here we go again, and yes, I have hooked the picture tube back up because I'm feeling confident that I licked the problem at least enough that I can turn the set on without the resistor frying. Tubes are all lighting up again. Current draw is reasonable. Well, honestly, I don't think I really fixed anything. I mean. I think even with the modified power supply uh, is essentially working the same way, just with a different ground reference. Yep, that's kind of what I figured. So putting the stuff back the way it was accomplished nothing. But, at least I got a better sense of what's going on. <laughs> Which means, simply that the problem lies elsewhere. Now it's warmer to the point where we've got that same weird current surge situation going on. Alrighty, well, this this is going to be interesting. I have not seen anything quite like this before. So I was thinking it was might be the power supply. But uh, I tested the caps at uh, pretty much their full rated voltage. And uh, they, they, uh, they weren't leaky. So, oh, and I also tested at least one of the... You know, the same type as those other green caps down there, and it wasn't leaky at all. 
No, just because one was okay doesn't mean the rest are. So I go spot check a few more. But if it's not the caps, well, well, certainly resistors, of course. And uh, there are old mica caps in there that may have gone bad. So uh, that's what I'll start doing next is uh, checking some caps.